Hydrofluoric acid is a dangerously corrosive and toxic chemical that is clear and colorless, similar to water. This video shows university laboratory personnel how to safely work with hydrofluoric acid or HF. The hydrofluoric acid liquid and vapor causes severe burns that may not be immediately visible or feel painful. The chemical is very toxic when in contact with skin, inhaled, or if swallowed. Hydrofluoric acid is corrosive causing burns, tissue necrosis, and can be fatal. Before beginning, make sure to complete the appropriate laboratory safety training before working in the laboratory. Then review written documents to inform yourself of the hazards of the chemicals you're working with. This includes a laboratory safety manual and or the chemical hygiene plan, the safety data sheets, and the standard operating procedures for your work. Orient yourself to the laboratory by locating and knowing how to use the nearest emergency equipment ahead of time, such as the emergency exit, the safety shower, eye wash station, first aid kit, fire extinguisher, and fire alarm pull station in case you need to evacuate the building. Have a chemical spill kit nearby that contains sodium bicarbonate for neutralization and calcium glutinate gel, which you'll need in case of accidental skin exposure. Use the buddy system, that is, arrange for a partner to work with you. Post signs in designated areas to communicate appropriate warnings and precautions, and notify others, not just those working with you, that you're working with a hazardous chemical. Make sure to label containers with the correct chemical name. Abbreviations are not acceptable. When you're ready, put on the proper personal protective equipment. This includes long pants and closed-toed shoes, long sleeves or a laboratory coat, nitrile gloves, safety glasses with side shields or safety goggles, and a face shield, especially if there's a potential for splashes. In addition, wear PVC or butyl gloves over your nitrile gloves and an apron that is waterproof or a Tyvek suit. The idea is to put as much between you and the chemical as possible. Prepare your supplies and equipment ahead of time and always work in a fume hood. Whenever possible, practice a dry run with a less hazardous chemical or water in your experiment. When you're ready to begin, make sure to measure the amount of chemical that is under the permissible exposure limit. Remember to dilute acids by adding it to water, never the reverse, to avoid the potential to cause splattering. All corrosives should be mixed slowly. In case of emergencies, have a buddy call 911 and stay on the phone for instructions. If you accidentally spill hydrofluoric acid on your skin, immediately flush the affected area with water for at least 15 minutes. Then, apply calcium glutinate gel to the burned skin only, massaging it into the affected area. If you accidentally splash hydrofluoric acid on your eyes, use an eye wash for at least 15 minutes. Then, follow campus procedures for injuries and medical treatment and always report the injury to a supervisor. When you're finished, store in a tightly closed container. Place the container below eye level on a non-corroding shelf, preferably in a corrosive or acid storage cabinet. Remember to separate acids from bases and segregate oxidizing acids from flammables. Also, double check that all containers are labeled. Afterward, ensure that you decontaminate the work surface. Thoroughly rinse all equipment and measuring containers, collecting the first rinse yet as hazardous waste. Then wipe down the work area to prevent chemical residue. Collect unused hydrofluoric acid as hazardous waste in a labeled plastic container following the procedures from environmental health and safety. Practice good personal hygiene by decontaminating affected clothing, removing personal protective equipment, and washing your hands for at least 20 seconds under warm soapy water. As a reminder, remember to know the hazards of the chemicals you're working with, prepare your work area including locating emergency and safety equipment, wearing personal protective equipment, responding promptly to exposures, and cautiously cleaning up spills without delay. For more information, please contact Environmental Health and Safety.